If you are a normal human being, you probably view otters as these cute little ice-playing rascals, but that's not the case at all. You see, the otter family might just be one of the most brutal and disturbing family of animals on the entire planet, and over the next eight minutes, I will be explaining exactly why that is. Now, the otter family has a lot of war crimes under their belt indeed. Some of them are literally unspeakable, as this video would probably get deleted if I go into detail. Anyways, we have a lot of ground to cover, so let's just start this off by exploring the insane life of the giant river otters, also known as the River Mafia. Unlike all the short kings watching this video, these absolute monsters can grow up to six freaking feet and weigh upwards around 75 pounds or 34 kilograms, making them the largest mustelid, which is why we naturally have to do a little otter versus other mustelid segment later on in the video. These jacked up otters are native to South America and patrol the Amazon River like they own the place, which they kind of do. Not only do they square up against the life-canceling machine known as the Jaguar, which is known for literally crushing skulls with their jaws, but they also also hunt and play with crocs on a daily basis, literally eating or unsubscribing pretty much anything with a pulse from existence. They can do this, not only for their refrigerator build, but the fact that they travel in large packs, which is also why the River Mafia is the perfect nickname indeed. Now, this psychotic reputation the giant river otter has built up might not be that surprising. I mean, just look at them. Half the pictures we see of them look like they just came out of a prison cell. As the title suggests, this video will cover a lot of really flipping disturbing facts about different otter behaviors, but before before we dive into the darker stuff, let me give you a quick little otter rundown. As mentioned earlier, otters belonging to the mustelid family, known for their playful behavior and remarkable adaptability. There are 13 recognized species, each exhibiting unique characteristics in a variety of habitats. These species are also distributed across various continents, with a presence in North America, South America, Europe, Africa, and Asia. Notably, otters have adapted to a wide range of environments, from freshwater rivers and lakes to coastal marine areas. Key attributes of otters include include their streamlined bodies, thick fur for insulation, and webbed feet ideal for swimming. They possess a high metabolic rate to maintain warmth in cold water and are known for their agility. Otters have a varied diet, primarily feeding on fish, crustaceans, and small mammals. Social behavior varies among species. Some are solitary, while others, like the sea otter, exhibit more social tendencies. Now let's dive deeper into the wicked world of the sea otter, which looks like it comes straight out of a Disney movie. But believe me, this cute facade hides a way more disturbing reality than the giant river otter could ever hope to achieve. So do these pictures make you feel something? Well, if not, then sit down and hold onto your chair, because this might be the most disturbing otter fact you will ever hear about. You see, male sea otters have been known to engage in some unwanted hormone activities with seal cubs, and yes, I am talking about exactly what you are thinking, although I have to be very careful with my words here. Anyways, it gets even worse. You see, these unfortunate events can last for several days, causing a lot of injuries, and they might even unsubscribe the seal from existence, but that is not the end of it, as these freaks don't really mind if it has a pulse or not. Okay, so that's all the details I dare to go into, but you get the picture. Now, the sea otters actually have a lot more disturbing quirks to cover. They are, for example, known to kidnap other otter cubs and basically hold them hostage until the mother gives up her food. I'm sure there is more to cover here, but that's pretty much all the dirt I could find on the sea otters for now. Despite all the dark little secrets the sea otter holds, they are also pretty remarkable, as they are some of the only animals that actually use tools to their benefit. They do, for example, use rocks or hard objects to crack open shellfish, revealing the juicy loot inside. This demonstrates a very high level of problem-solving skills. This is actually something we see in a lot of animals in the mustelid family. We do, for example, have Stoffel the honey badger, who could literally escape from anything, including picking locks and making flip staircases out of mud, only to break into his caretaker's home and steal some bacon from his fridge. But yes, mustelids in general are a pretty smart group of animals. I've actually touched on this before, but to me, this is what makes them true psychopaths, as you would think that they must be kind of stupid to do all these crazy shenanigans, like playing with lions, chasing jaguars, or the really dark stuff the sea otters are into. But no, they are fully aware of what they are doing, which just makes it all that much more unsettling. Otters in general are also very territorial, which has led to several bad encounters with humans, in many cases leading to pretty brutal injuries. But the otters are obviously too small to actually do any real life-threatening damage. But the scary thing is that a single scratch from an otter could infect you with rabies, which could lead to a revoked membership to life if left untreated. Now, one thing otters definitely do not do is discriminate between their targets, as 
they will pretty much throw down with whatever annoys them in a given situation, like this sorry little monkey or this grass-eating soy boy orangutan. And we do, of course, have all the victims by the hand of the giant river otters mentioned at the start of the video. So now that we know just how ferocious and menacing these otters can be, let's see how they match up to other members of the mustelid family, like the ball-biting honey badger, the bear-slapping wolverine, or even the cougar-destroying American badger. For this comparison, I will be using the giant river otter as an example, as it is the largest of the bunch. The first thing to consider is the size difference, which is noticeable. They weigh around 13 pounds or 6 kilograms more than the second largest mustelid, namely the wolverine, and almost 16 kilograms or 35 pounds more than the ball-busting honey badger. So in terms of pure mass, there is no competition. They also have a very gnarly set of teeth, but they lack the same bone-crushing bite force of their peers. They also have puny claws compared to the honey badger or wolverine. They basically just have nails, which in such a showdown would be completely useless. Although they might lack a bit in offensive abilities, they have a solid defense. You see, the fur of an otter is not just incredibly thick, but it is also the densest fur in the animal kingdom, which will play a major role in protecting against bites and scratches. But then again, almost all good-sized mustelids are known for their robust skin and fur. Just look at the honey badger, for example. Even with its tiny size, it can survive intense altercations with both lions and hyenas. If the giant river otter were to face off against any of these monsters, it would also have a pretty big disadvantage, as it's not as agile on land as in water, so it's really hard to tell who would win. But let's take the wolverine, for example. It's almost the same size, but it has a more potent set of weaponry as well as a solid defense. The wolverine is also used to handling massive bears and even packs of wolves, so I'm pretty sure it would win if they were to meet. Let me know in the comments how you think these encounters would go down. Anyways, let's move on over to something a bit more prehistoric. You see, like most mustelids, the otter is a pretty soy version of what they used to be. There are mainly three different absolute units I would like to share with you, each one bigger than the other. First up, we have the Megalonhydris barbarossina. Now, the exact size of this prehistoric giant is somewhat speculative due to an incomplete fossil record. But one thing is for sure, this creature was bigger than any of the modern otter species we see today. It lived around 11,000 years ago during the Pleistocene epoch and was likely driven to extinction because of habitat loss. Next, we have the Enhydridon dickike, which also lived during the Pleistocene epoch. This otter was even bigger and had a large, robust head, which suggests that it was a predator that may have hunted larger prey, justifying the immense bite force it had. This specimen actually lived in Africa, so it's possible that the ancestor of the honey badger and this monster had run ins with each other. Lastly, we have the largest otter to ever exist. Meet the giant that was the Siamagale Melilutra. Unlike the other two, this monster lived in the Miocene epoch around 6 million years ago. And even though it's older, we actually have a more complete fossil record of it. It weighed over 120 pounds or 60 kilograms. The interesting thing about this specimen is that its jaw size and structure suggest an insanely strong bite force, way stronger than thought necessary, which begs the question of what this thing was hunting or eating. The discovery of this behemoth actually challenged previous notions about the size limitations of otters, as it was so large. Anyways, that's the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, then maybe watch some of my other videos on screen, and I will see you in the next one.